Right, today is the day that I'm going to uh, do the isolating parts of the track. And the first thing I've done is cut out well 16 pieces of wire. Now I've done them short lengths and I'm going to connect them underneath when I know the exact lengths I'll need uh, with uh, heat wrap and solder. So basically what you do is first thing you need to do is prepare your wire. So you get some, you pre-solder it which is easy, just cover it with flux. Put some more solder on it and you see the solder follows the flux. But it's that simple. You do the other side too because it will make it a lot easier when you come to connect it to some wire underneath. So just dip it in the flux, cover your line with solder and you can see it's easy. Done. Simple. So that's basically it. You prepare your wire to be soldered to the track. Uh, and we move on to the next stage. Right, here is a piece of track. Now, first thing you've got to do is drill your holes. Now these are going to be away either side because I'm close to the joist. So it's a lot further apart than they would normally be, but I don't have a choice. And there's your holes. Now you make sure that your wire goes all the way through, which it does, no problem. Through the hole, no problem. Next thing I do is, you don't want mess around your solder. So I hoover up the mess. Simple as that. The next thing you do is, you get your pre-wired, pre-soldered wire. Here we are. And you dip it in the flux, like you saw me do before. So, you dip it in the flux, like you would your finger into ice cream, and you put it on the, put it down the hole. As I said, I've used Pico isolators, but in other areas where I haven't had them, I've just used a grinding wheel on the Dremel, and uh, that's made life easy. Now some of you might think, why is he doing that when he's got digital trains? Well, the first thing is, I don't always run digital trains, and the second thing is, I want the option to run both. So basically, then what you do is, if you hold the wire against the track, like you can see, let's get the soldering iron it's all a bit of a lump of solder there but that'll soon melt in so basically just push it against the track it will follow the flux and that sometimes happens so that's stuck in the wrong place so let's give it a bit more heat and there you go as simple as that in fact that is a little bit high on the track so what I will do is push that down a little bit, there we go, and if you've got a bit of solder that's over on the track, what you do is just rub it with the heat and that's it, and you can file it out of the way, that's not the most perfect joint I've done. But, and that's it and you can test it afterwards and obviously the second one I need another wire now I think this one will run a little bit better that lump of solder really wasn't the best so I push it down the hole and once you've got ballast on you're not going to see this anyway Jesus Christ, it ain't gonna. So you just push it down and you push the track, push it down, push it into position like you, I hope you can see. Get the solder iron, hold it against it, and there you go. And that's a lot better than the other one. And that's basically how you do it, it's as simple as that. And just to make sure that. 
it does work. Bring some coaches down, see if any derail, not at all. And bear in mind, you're only driving in here slowly anyway, but even so, bogeys can still come off, but you can hear there's not even a carriage noise over it. And it's that simple. Now what I do, is I do short strands of wire, because I don't know how much wire I'm going to need in total. Now here, if I was on a fast bend, I'd probably file it down a little bit. But because they're going in slowly, then I don't really need to. It's, it's not that severe, I've seen worse track at model railway shows on people's layouts. But it's basically it really. Now what's happened here is, is the sole is a little bit lumpy. But trust me, it looks a lot, lot worse than a 4K camera. So what I can do is, I can just take the top off and flatten it a little bit and you can see it's, it's easy to do and the carriage you can't, it's perfect. Now the other option you can do is, is you can take all the solder off and do it again is fine but no it might look a bit it, it, it probably looks hideous on a 4k camera but from a distance trust me it looks absolutely fine and that works there are people going to say well that's not perfect nah, 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 nah. but at the end of the day that's it when you've got it all ballast and ballast around it you won't even notice it you won't even notice and that's basically it that's now nice and smooth now where these wires go is you go to these little switches, these little blue switches, two way switches and you just solder them to them and you connect them. One way off, one way on. You see the switches on a board, one, two, three, four, five, six, all connected up. What you've done it is like this. If you could see the green so you can see over here that switch one of the isolator isolates that area. You could see where switch two isolates the other area. So it's all pretty clear. Here is a piece of truck I isolated last year in a fiddle yard and you can hardly notice it. Come back away. Obviously with a 4K camera poking at it you notice everything but you don't even notice. And here it is from the other side where it's soldered. And you can see once you've got the ballast you can hardly notice. Obviously I pull the camera in more and more and more and you can see it. So while those little bits of solder look hideous to begin with, once you've got the ballast and everything down you don't even notice.